10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Merry Christmas! Hey everybody, welcome to the John DeVito Show. It is Christmas Eve 2020, so you know I haven't been doing live shows this week, just taking a little break, um, you know, this week so I can kick back with the family a little bit and just take some of the pressure off. But uh, I wanted to record a message tonight on Christmas Eve because Christmas Eve to me has always been one of the most magical nights of the year. It really is. I mean, for me now, even at my age, it, there's something about Christmas Eve that sets it apart from other nights where, you know, the magic of your childhood. I remember being a young boy, you know, in New Hampshire, sitting up in my room at night, just waiting for Santa Claus to come, or waiting, you know, for that moment in the morning when I got up, ran downstairs and was able to see the presents that, you know, Santa Claus brought me. And, you know, back in the day, you know, my parents didn't make a lot of money. So, you know, Santa Claus never really bring us or brought us a tremendous amount of presents. They, you know, he brought us a decent amount of things and we never felt like we were, um, you know, missing anything as children, but it was always just a very, you know, special night, special day. And even at this point in my life, you know, 52 years old, I've got children who are now, you know, growing up and getting older. We don't have any Santa believers left in our house, unfortunately, but still the feeling of Christmas Eve for me is special. It's um, 1030 right now, Eastern time, and the rest of my family went to bed. My wife's in bed. Uh, my four children are up sleeping. So I decided to get on and just do a quick podcast to talk a little bit about what Christmas Eve means to me, what it's always meant to me in my life, and what it means to me now, you know. I've always had this tradition that I've done since I was kind of a, a little kid. I'm a big fan of, you know, Christmas movies. I love, you know, It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, I actually watched that for the first time in my late 20s when I was going through a very difficult time. And It's a Wonderful Life actually has a lot of meaning to me where, you know, especially in that bar scene where he was kind of losing it, you know, saying, you know, Jesus, show me the way. I remember going through a very difficult time in my life. And I remember seeing that movie. And seeing that part of the movie and it just like literally spoke to me it was like such a huge thing in my life and i've been a huge fan of it's a wonderful life you know for many many years now it's such a great movie with a great message you know for everybody that you know in your life you don't know the number of lives you touch and the different people you help by your actions and you know that's why i i try as much as i can to be a kind person I try to do the right things for other people. I'm not always successful. I make mistakes, you know, like everybody else does, but I try to do the right thing more often than not, hoping that some of the things that I do in my life will make a difference in the lives of other people. So as I was saying, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, holiday movies, Christmas movies. It's a Wonderful Life is probably my favorite, but the one movie that I've probably watched more than any other has been pretty much every conceivable version of a Christmas Carol. And I'm not sure why I've always liked the story of Ebenezer Scrooge. I've loved the story of how this man, you know, became obsessed with money and, you know, later in his life finally has an epiphany moment where he realizes that life isn't all about money and he gets back involved with his family and tries to do the right thing, you know, by his employees, by the members of his community and by, you know, people in his, in his family. And, for me, these type of movies have always been something that's I've thought about it a lot. And even though I understand they're fiction, they're not real you know, stories, still they are stories to me that pack a punch and help me to think about and realize, you know, what type of man I want to be, what type of person I want to be. And like I said, I'm far from perfect. You know, nobody out there is perfect. None of us are. And, you know, I, I just do the best I can every day. But from, from the time I was a little kid, 
I would always watch A Christmas Carol. You know, when I was young in New Hampshire, you know, my parents would go to bed early. I would get up and, you know, on the four or five channels we had back in the day, I usually had to search on a UHF channel. And for younger people, you don't know what that is. But it was difficult to get those channels in. You had to kind of play with a dial and almost try to tune it in like an old style radio to get the television shows on. But I would always find an old version of A Christmas Carol and I would watch it. And for whatever reason, it's something that just speaks to me. It makes me think about, you know, Christmas Eve of, you know, from the time I was a little child up into now. You know, over the years, we've had a lot of different traditions on Christmas Eve. I remember as a young child, I was always so excited when my grandmother would come to our house on Christmas Eve and she would stay over and she would be there. And just the excitement was incredible. I remember being a child, not being able to sleep. I remember being concerned when I was little that Santa Claus was going to burn himself when he came down the chimney and we had a fire going in our fireplace. So I remember being upset about that one year. My parents talked me off the ledge and made me realize that there was nothing to worry about. Santa Claus would be okay. But I remember a lot of those stories. I remember one year I couldn't sleep when I was little because I thought I heard, you know, Santa's reindeer and his sleigh landing on our roof and I got all excited. And I just think about the excitement it brought. And one of the most amazing things about being a father over the last 18 years for me has been again to watch that excitement through the eyes of my children it's it's been beautiful it's been amazing it has been something that i will you know never forget and to see my kids excited thinking about santa and literally getting to the point where i thought i thought some years their heads were going to literally explode you know spontaneous combustion they were so excited but um you know it's just been an amazing ride and even now you know, I went from the childhood where, you know, my grandmother would come over on Christmas Eve, uh, we would hang out with her, and then Christmas Day, we would open our presents at our, you know, at my parents' house, and then we get dressed, and we would drive uh, the hour-long ride from southern New Hampshire to the Boston area where my other grandmother lived, and she had like an old Victorian house, it was a beautiful house, and my Nana was just a wonderful woman, a beautiful lady. Both of my grandmothers were, but she, she would host just the most beautiful Christmas. She had a very elegant home and we would go in and, oh, she had like just the most beautiful dinner, you know, tons of presents for us again. And it was always just such a warm, welcoming, happy feeling to be at my Nana's house. I'd love going there so, so much as a child. And I've told this story on some of my other live shows where I, I will never forget one, you know, one of the cool things about being in her house was, you know, when we were leaving, we were sad that we had to leave, you know, Christmas was over and you're a little kid and that's, you know, pretty depressing knowing that the, the holiday's over. But I remember we would get in our car and she lived on a pretty busy street near Boston and we would look up at her house as we were leaving. And I'm even doing it right now, looking up at her house you know, because it was like a three-story home in Boston, so it was pretty high, and there was a little small window in the kitchen, you know, smaller than all the rest of the windows in the house, and she would always be in that little small window waving at us, and I'll just never forget, you know, looking up, and my sister and I both knew that we had to look up and wave at that little window to say goodbye to Nana, and it was just such a such an amazing memory. So many wonderful things like that happened to me in my childhood on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And even over the last 18 years now, you know, we've had new tra new uh, traditions where, you know, we would generally on Christmas Eve day, you know, once we had children, my wife and I, we would end up going up to New Hampshire. Now, we live in central Massachusetts, which is about an hour and 15 maybe an hour and 20 minutes from where our parents live. And my wife and I, our parents literally live like a mile and a half apart. So they were both in New Hampshire, but two separate school districts. So we didn't know each other growing up. And there's a difference in age between the two of us. But it worked out so well that, you know, I met my wife in Boston and we ended up literally living a mile and a half apart from each other in New Hampshire, which was just crazy. So we would go up every year for Christmas Eve day and we would go to my parents' house first and spend you know, probably three, four hours at my, at my parents' house. And then we would drive the mile and a half over to my in-law's house and spend another four or five hours there. And uh, it was just, you know, amazing days where both sets of grandparents were giving our children presents. And then 
after you know spending time at my father-in-law's house and my mother-in-law's house, we would go to another house in Derry, New Hampshire, which isn't too, too far from where my parents and my wife's parents uh, lived. And we would go to a party there with additional family members. And we would usually be there till you know 10 o'clock at night. And then we'd drive all the way back home to Massachusetts. And then on Christmas Day, we would have our entire family over to our house. And you know, some some Christmases we had up close to 20 people at our house, and it was just magical, you know. But over the last few years, things have changed a little bit. You know, we lost my mother, we lost my mother-in-law, and now because of COVID, you know, we have so many fewer people coming to Christmas this year that it's it's a little sad in some ways. But you know, we're finding a way to absolutely embrace Christmas Eve this year. We're finding a way to embrace Christmas. You know, for me and for all of you out there, I know that 2020 has been hard. It's been hard for all of us. You know, this is this is going to be a year that we will all remember for as long as we live. But try, if you can, tonight. You know, it's Christmas Eve right now. Try to make it a positive experience for your children, a positive experience for your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your spouse, you know, your parents, whoever you're with. Try to make it a good experience. Try to make it a positive memory because really – it's all about how we make the most of this opportunity because the Christmases of today will be the Christmases of yesterday before we know it. So enjoy tonight with your family. Enjoy tomorrow with your family. Even if it's just going to be a couple of people getting together or you're having a big get together, you know, even if you happen to be alone, you know, try to make the best you can, you know, out of Christmas this year. I know it's difficult for everybody, but, you know, we only get this Christmas in 2021 time. So just try to make the best of it. You know, start a new family tradition, maybe try to do some of the old family traditions that are still happening this year. But, you know, Christmas is is just a magical time where it seems like the entire world just becomes a little bit happier for a few weeks every year. And for me, I've always wished that we could live in a world that was happy like this all the time. But unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. But embrace it while you can. You know, this beautiful time of the year where people are feeling loved, they're being generous, and they're treating people like they should treat them the remainder of the year. You know, it's it's that just that special time of year. So, you know, for us now, you know, our Christmas looks a little bit different this year. This year, what we did was today, I was able to go up to New Hampshire with my son, Ethan, my son, Brandon, and my daughter, Caitlin. My wife, Cheryl, had to work today, unfortunately, and then she, my son, Matt, also had to work. So it was just us going up. We met my sister at my father's house, and we went to have a lunch at this uh, golf course that's right behind my father's house called the Atkinson Country Club. So we ended up having a really nice lunch there with my father, my sister, and then you know four members of my family out of the six. So it was a nice day. Uh, we were able to come home. I picked my son up at work. And then we spent the night tonight just kind of finishing up some of the preparations, getting the presents ready, baking cookies, and then uh, watched a little bit of TV before bed. And what I've got going on right now, believe it or not, like I said, my entire family went to bed. So in the other room right now, in my TV loom, room i have a christmas carol right now paused <laughs> so as soon as i get done with this broadcast i'm going to go back to a christmas carol i'm going to finish watching that and then i'm going to go to bed and get ready for christmas day so you know all in all it's been a good christmas so far you know tomorrow is going to be a little bit smaller we're just going to have my immediate family we're going to have my sister you know, my father-in-law is in Florida. He hasn't come back because he's afraid of COVID. And, you know, my father, same thing. We're gonna, He's going to probably just stay home tomorrow because we're apparently going to be having a very stormy day up here in New England as well. So, but, you know, tomorrow is going to be a little bit different. But for me, you know, I, I am going to try to embrace every moment of this time with my family. And that's one of the one of the ways I've tried to look at this pandemic. You know, I'm 52 years old now. I got kind of a late start getting married. I didn't get married till I was 33. So my oldest child is 18. My youngest is 11. You know, literally 10 years from now, all of my kids are going to be gone. They're going to be gone. They're going to be off in college. They're going to be working their jobs. They're going to be living with their families. And it's going to be my wife and I. So even though this pandemic has been very difficult, I've gotten so far nine months of time with my children that I would never trade back for anything in the world. And I know some of you are probably like, oh my God, he's nuts. I'm home with my kids. I'm ready to kill them. Trust me. I have plenty of those days. 
where I'm on Zoom calls for work and I have to break up like a fight in the middle of the kitchen <laughs> between two of my boys. It's happened more than once while I've been on calls. And I let all my company people know, just so you know, you know, I've got four kids home with me. I may have to duck out and break up a fight. I'm sorry if I have to. And I've had to do that a few times. But, you know, when it's all said and done, 10 years from now, when the house is empty, the kids are gone, and it's just my wife and I, you know, we're going to think about these nine months. We're going to think about the positive things that came out of this pandemic, the amount of time we were able to spend with each other. And, you know, time is something you can't pay for. You can't buy it. You know, you can't go out and recreate it. Once time has moved on, once time has passed, it's over. And it becomes a memory. And I'm glad that over these nine months so far, I've been able to make some good memories with my children, with my wife, with my family. And I hope all of you have as well. You know, I hope that you're finding a way to be happy during this time. I know it's tough out there. People are losing jobs. Businesses are closing. And it's been a very, very difficult year for a lot of people. But the good news is the vaccine's out. The year's almost over. We're getting towards the end of this thing, and things are going to return back to normal. So remember that going into the into the holiday tomorrow. You know, go out and enjoy your day with your family. Enjoy your day with whoever you're with. And if you're alone, enjoy your day. Do something special for yourself. You know, don't feel like being alone this year at Christmas means that you're going to be alone forever at Christmas. So go out and do something positive. You know, do something fun. Do something special for yourself. Okay, so now before I sign off, I want to just say this very quickly. Um, I want to thank each and every person who has taken the time out to listen to my podcast. You know, I started this back in March. I've got almost 20,000 downloads. And again, I know that that doesn't put me in the realm of top podcasters by any means. But I can tell you all that for the people that take their time out and they listen to me, I am truly humbled by each and every one of you. I wish I knew all of you, you know, it's, it's the nature of this business where, you know, I do these podcasts and you know people listen to me and I don't get to touch base with all of you, but I, I would like to more often. So if you get a chance, you know, send me an email. Uh, I publish all my podcasts with my email, you know, send me a message on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, let me know who you are, where you're from. And I respond to all of my emails. So it may take me a little bit, but I do respond. So I want to just thank every single person that has taken time out of their schedule to listen to my live shows on Podbean, to come into the chat room, to ask me questions, the people that participate. I want to thank all of the people that download my shows from all the various podcasting platforms like iHeartRadio, Spotify, you know, Apple Podcasts, etc. To me, when I see the numbers, it's just absolutely humbling to me to think that people come back to listen to me. And that makes me feel great. It really does. I didn't know what this whole thing was going to be like when I started, and I never really envisioned that my podcast would you know, take off in the way that it has. And when I say take off, I don't mean as far as popularity. I mean as far as taking me in different directions in my life where I've met new people, where I've been able to help some people out, where I've actually done, done some important podcasts that have been on very relevant topics. So, you know, I feel very, very fortunate. I really do. I mean, I've got a lot of good friends that I've met on Podbean, and I'm afraid to say names because I don't want to forget anybody. But I mean, I'm going to mention just a few people that really mean a lot to me. Uh, first and foremost has to be my right-hand man, Eric Kirk. He's a guy that uh, was with me from day one. He does a lot of work to help promote my podcast. Uh, he's a great guy. He lives in Georgia. I've never met him, but he and I are you know, good friends now, and I really appreciate the fact that I met him. And there are so many other good podcasters that I've met, really good friends. Dina Joe from The Old Man Show, you know, Chit Chat with the Old Man, uh, The Old Man as well. Uh, there are so many people, you know, me from Slightly Serious, the Slightly Serious Show, VOP Network, uh, Father Brian, Mother Rebecca, uh, oh my God, I, I, Laura from her show, uh, Cracks. I mean, there are so many people that I've met over the course of the last year, and I know I'm going to forget people, so I apologize if I did. But it just humbles me that I've made so many friends, and I've been able to have an impact on people's lives in some way whatsoever. So for the people that have listened to my show, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Drop me a line sometime. Shoot me an email. I'd love to hear who you are, and uh, I'd, I'd be happy to talk to you at some point. So I hope, hopefully I hear from some people through my different platforms where you can reach out to me, okay? Now, one last thing I'm going to do, and you know, I didn't even plan on doing this, but I'm going to do this because this is something I've done every year for the last 
number of years. And normally I would go outside at my in-laws house. Once it got dark out, I would go out into the driveway by myself because they usually had a lot of people at their house. I would get some peace and quiet and I would say my Christmas Eve prayer for uh, people in my family for, you know, friends, for people that needed prayers. And, you know, I don't do this often. I'm not a really a church going guy, but I am a spiritual guy. I'm going to say my Christmas Eve prayer right here on Podbean tonight. This will be a first. And to be honest with you, it makes me a little nervous to do it. So bear with me as I rip this out. But, you know, God, I just want to thank you for the life that you've given me. I am incredibly blessed in so many different ways. I have an amazing wife. I have an amazing family. I just have an amazing life. I live in a great town. You know, I've been able to do so many things with my family and with my children. You know, the life that you've given me is more full than any life I could have ever dreamt for myself. You know, when I was a young man, I wanted certain things and I didn't get all those things that I wanted, but I didn't realize there was a plan for me to actually do even greater things with my life, which I now see in full view. And it's been amazing. So, If I could, I want to pray tonight for my father who is suffering from dementia. He's 80 years old. He's having a difficult time. He misses my mother. He's alone a lot. If you could do something in your power to help my dad, I would greatly appreciate it. Give him some comfort, make him feel better. And if you could just do something to help my dad because he's really struggling right now. Another special prayer goes out to my father-in-law who had triple bypass heart surgery a couple of years ago and he's recovering from that still. And, you know, he is my second father. He's a great man. And, you know, we don't always see eye to eye, just like I don't with my dad and like my sons don't with me, but I really respect how much my father-in-law loves his family, loves his grandchildren. And if you could make sure you take care of him because the two grandfathers, we want them back with us for next Christmas. So if you could, God, if you could maybe do something to help both of them, I would greatly appreciate it. God, if you could also bless my wife, she's been working very hard all through this pandemic, you know, taking care of people with COVID and testing people with COVID. I would appreciate it if you could protect her, help my son, Matt, continue to go on his path. As you know, he has autism, but he's been doing great. He's got his first job. He's graduating from high school. If you could help my son, Matt, continue to flourish going forward, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, My daughter, Caitlin, she's had some rough times. She's doing much better right now. If you could continue to help her build her confidence and get through these difficult teenage years, I would appreciate it. She's a wonderful woman. She's intelligent. She's beautiful. I love her pieces. And if you could help give her strength, I would greatly appreciate that. For my two youngest boys, we've got Ethan and Brandon. I love them both. Um, So proud of both of them. You know, they're doing well in school. They're doing well with friends. They play sports. And if anything, if you could make sure that they both grow up with love in their hearts and realize that life isn't just about material things, life is about love and caring and doing things for other people, then that is something that's very, very important for everybody to learn. And I hope that they learn that. And please continue to give them strength as they grow into young men, which I can't believe is already happening. Okay. Now, if I could also pray for the missing members of my family, you know, my mother, who I loved dearly and was the toughest woman I've ever met in my life, you know, my grandparents on both sides of the family, my uncle Jack, and all the relatives I never got to meet, if I could pray for all of them. And I hope that all of you are up there looking down at me and proud of me. I hope I'm doing a good job. I hope I have become, you know, the man that you want me to be or you you hoped I would be. So I hope that I'm doing you all proud and I love you and miss you all very, very much. I also want to pray for my Podbean family, for all the people that come into my show every day, you know, for the people that are regulars in my live shows on Podbean, for the people that listen to me on download, you know, for my close friends like Eric and Dina Joe and Old Man and you know, all the others, Mr. A and you know, AJ and all the different people that come in my shows, Light Bright, there's so many. You know, I want to pray for each and every one of you. Snow Pro is another one. Snow Pro reached out to me via text tonight. So if I could pray for all of my friends on Podbean, hoping you have a very Merry Christmas and God is in your lives and he is supporting you and makes you feel good about where you are in your life and continues to give you strength, then I hope that God will help each and every one of you have a wonderful 2021. 
And again, you know, finally, I want to just pray to all the people in the world right now, because it's been a very difficult time. You know, this pandemic has been kicking everybody's backside for the last year. And I want to just pray for this world. Hopefully we can all come together. We can unify, we can beat this pandemic and maybe somehow we'll come out as maybe a more unified world, you know, a more unified country and move forward just as a closer people altogether. So that's pretty much it. You know, that's my prayer. So God bless you. Um, thank you, God, for everything you've done for me. And this will be my you know Christmas Eve prayer for 2020. So anyway, that's something I've done every year for the last number of years, and they sometimes go on for quite a while. So this is the first time I've ever broadcasted. It's a little embarrassing for me to do that, but hopefully you all enjoyed that and it'll make you, you know, maybe feel that, it's important for us to all have some type of you know, religion or spiritual feeling or God in our lives. Because I think if you have that, then it helps you to become a stronger, more fulfilled person. So for anybody, uh, for, for any, you know, for everybody out there, I want to thank you so much again for tuning into my show. It's Christmas Eve. I might even do a little pop in show tomorrow for Christmas day, but I hope all of you have a wonderful Christmas Eve. I hope you're with family. I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. And just remember you know, enjoy every day while you can, because there's no guarantee you're going to get it tomorrow. So enjoy today, enjoy tomorrow. And then, you know, start to start to realize that this pandemic in 2020 is going to be behind us, be behind us before we know it. So get ready to move forward into 2021. It's going to be a fantastic year. So Merry Christmas to everybody. I love you all. Thank you for tuning into my show. And I will talk to you all soon. Okay, take care. And thank you very much.